Okay. California K30 update. Got brand new 235-85-16 dirt tracks on some very clean steel wheels. I put, didn't want to, but it's my only truck right now and the rot box isn't doing too good so I had to put this uh, plow mount on there. It's kind of a rare plow mount, it's a minute mount. They're hard to find and when you do find them people want like five, six hundred bucks for them. Um, I, I undercoated most of the frame uh, because I do have to drive this truck this winter because I don't have any other vehicle and I don't really have any other money to spend on another vehicle so I'm not working. But I, uh, I mixed up a candle, a couple tubes of axle grease, some bar and chain oil, and some kerosene and I sprayed most of the frame and pretty much all underneath the cab. I still got to drill holes in the rockers in cab corners because they're all rust free and you know I don't think that'll hold up in New England if I don't undercoat it so um, the tanks aren't gonna get that undercoated I don't really it's hard to get under there and I waste a lot of spray trying to get them get all the tanks so I don't feel like dropping the uh, skid plate to do them so tanks are easy to replace <laughs> they rot out but all up under there I made sure to get as long as the cab and the frame stay good, that's all I care about. I don't really care. Now, of course I care, but I'd rather the cab and the frame stay good over the bed and the fenders because those are more replaceable. I always like an original cab and frame. Still got to get the drill some holes in the floor for the uh, getting the cab support, the oil in there. Um, I had a steering box plate professionally welded on just because I didn't want to fuck it up. And it kind of messed with my plow frame when I went to put on the plow for the first time, the frame. Because the steering box brace ends like right here and it's like halfway into the plow frame so the plow frame isn't sitting completely flush with it but I'm just going to have to keep an eye on the bolts make sure they're, they stay tight and stuff. But yeah. I took axle grease and got all the seams with my fingers up underneath here. You see the grill's got some oil spray on it. I don't know if that's going to come off. It's kind of shitty, but oh well. Um, I'd like to check, I want to check the hubs on these because I never, I haven't checked the hubs yet. I mean, this truck sat for 20 years, so, you know, it's a good idea for me to do a once over before I start to throw it in four wheel drive this winter. You know, change the train, the transfer case fluid in the 205. Um, I greased all up underneath the lips of the doors. I'm um, planning on putting the glove box back in. You can see this door, it's not bad at all. The hint, the, this is not bad at all. This is like barely worn. I'm gonna take some PEX tubing and put that on there. It's a, uh, do-it-yourself door bush repair. Um, but the reason I have this door off is because being that this truck was from California, it was originally on a 300 acre ranch um, in Vesalia, or however you pronounce it. And they probably drove around with the door like open a lot, you know, get in and go, get out and go, get out and go. You know, doing work around the ranch. So this seat was trashed. I swapped that seat in. I think I already said that though in another video. But these hinges, I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that is, these are some of the worst square body door hinges I've ever seen in like the 10 or 12 trucks I've owned. I mean, I'm literally, I'm just gonna replace the whole hinge with another truck's hinge that I got laying around just because I don't, I don't really know if it wore into the, hard part of the hinge um, the because you know the bushings wear out and then they start scraping into the metal I just don't want to deal with that so um, I bought a can of fluid film first time I ever bought it um, seems alright it's 
a lot more environmentally friendly than spraying your undercarriage with oil. But I made sure to get some shitty rust spot areas. I lifted this up down the weather stripping up at the bottom to spray some fluid film in the bottom there. Um, Cause they do rot out there. I'm gonna try and get the rest of the, under the seal. I might buy another can. Um, and then I got a big box of precision weather stripping, which is going on both doors because the weather stripping on these doors is just shot. I mean, I can't roll my window halfway more than two inches down without it rattling. You can see there's just nothing left of that weather stripping. Um, so I either have to have my door all the way up or all the way down to prevent, um, you know, breaking the window. And you can tell that, you know, this was the door that was on the bad hinge. Um, you know, it's starting to rub through the metal. I don't really want to deal with that, so. Um, yeah, oh, I'll show you the striker too, what that looked like. That was the striker. It looks worse in person, but that's what happens when your door bushings go. Door latch hits the striker. I mean, you know, the body line is completely off, so we'll fix that. I also got to fix the uh, part of the exhaust because while I'm driving, the tailpipes uh, from the bounce bumps, something's not tightened down completely and it pushes itself up into the behind the bed every time. So, and last thing is up here, this truck had a Either there's like a CB radio or like cab light or something. It's like what that truck's got. I don't know if you can see it, but right behind the uh, dome light, cargo light, there's a little plaque stick cap and uh, some wire sticking out. That's the same thing as what's right here, but it got ripped off. There's a big gash in the metal and there's an open hole here. So I just bought a nickel plated plug and some uh, clear silicone for you know marine rated or whatever aquariums but yeah that's uh that's an update of the k30 thanks for watching